Okay, welcome back everyone to uh, the continuation of our celebration. And uh, we're starting session number two, which is titled Communication, Information Theory and Networks. Um, we'll, we'll start with honoring a couple of prominent members of our society, of, our, of LIDS and of our society as well. Uh, however, I wanted to start with a small remark here. So I really want to draw your attention to two words in this title, theory and works, right? <laughs> so I, I, really, I really liked this comment that uh, uh, John presented in his slides, how Mike Athens sa said that Leeds uh, does not do applications, right? Uh, and uh, somehow, I think that's, you know, that's the attitude of many people who learn about information theory and coding theory and communication in college and maybe in graduate school, right? Because the first sentence in an information theory class would be, let P Y given X be a random transformation or a probability transition kernel, right? Or actually maybe let X be a measurable space, right? So that's a, that's a very abstract notion, right? The coding theory starts not very, not much more pragmatically, right? It would start with let GF2 to the P be the Galois extension of a binary field, right? I mean, that's, again, so when you hear this phrase, you kind of want to say that, is this stuff ever practical, right? Does anybody care about this stuff in, in the real world? And that's the, that's the sort of, that's, that's the emphasis on the word works, because I really wanted to share some little story, like not the hist historic, I mean, most of you probably know about it, but maybe some people don't, and then you'll, you'll really admire how much leads people influence real life. So, unfortunately, I took my cell phone out, but uh, if you hold your cell phone, right, and you ask yourself, how did the, his how did the standards historically developed? So before 1991, majority of the communication was analog. So, you know, analog communication comes back from Armstrong and so on. So this is, this is the stuff we, we, don't, uh, we don't talk about. But starting from 1991 with the so-called 2G, second generation wireless networks, right? The, the cellular started moving into the domain of interest of leads. And the 2G was based on the notion of codes, which is known as convolutional codes. So, so who invented convolutional codes or rather, who sort of, what kind of methods used uh, for their decoding? That's the Viterbi algorithm, right? So Viterbi algorithm is called, is named after Andrew Viterbi, the founder of Qualcomm. But the name Viterbi algorithm, it was invented by Dave Forney, the lead Salam and uh, one of our honorees. And uh, Dave Forney also, as, as we will learn very quickly, very soon, um, introduced the important concept of trellis. He wrote his foundational text on uh, algebraic, algebraic theory of convolutional codes and so on. Okay, so let's move on. So 10 years pass by, and then in 2000, we get the third generation standard. It's still based on convolutional codes. However, the big breakthrough there was the scheduling algorithm, which was invented by David Che, so-called proportional fair scheduling algorithm. Okay, so another 10 years pass by, 2010, we are moving into the LTE, the fourth generation, the fourth generation. So the fourth generation, the big breakthrough was the adoption of the LDPC, low density parity check codes. Those codes were invented in a PhD thesis of Bob Gallagher, our, our, uh, another of our honorees, and of course the former director of LIDS. So now we are moving in 2020 for the adoption of the 5G standard, and you would say, okay, by now probably LIDS lost its influence, right? And um, it cannot be, but no, actually, the two codes, the two main codes in the fifth generation standards are invented by Erdo Arikan, who is here, and the polar codes, that's the polar codes. Um, scheme and uh, the other the other sort of uh, channel the data transmission channel uh, is is based on a version of LDPC codes known as multi-edge or protograph codes which were designed by Tom Richardson the the, the famous graduate of, of Leeds so we see that over this you know 30 years or 40 years of evolution four different generations the key aspects the key evolutionary revolutionary aspects of each generation was introduced by Leeds alums right and Yet all of them started their education with, you know, let P be a probability measure on a measurable space. <laughs> so, 
Okay, so I wasted enough of your time, but I just wanted to say that even though we don't do applications, somehow applications find us sometimes. Okay, so with this, we want to start with the first, uh, uh, with the first honoree. Uh, we will honor Bob Gallagher. And uh, the person who will introduce him is uh, Professor Emer Talatar. So he received his bachelor degree in electrical engineering from uh, Middle East Technical University in Ankara in 86. And he received the PhD from Leeds in 1992, after which he joined the famous Bell Labs uh, department, communications analysis research department in Murray Hill. And in 2000, he joined the PFL, where he is now. So uh, I don't want to go very, you know, over very long introductions, but Emery is famous for his 2001 paper, um, on, uh, for which he received the information theory, uh, sorry, it's an earlier paper, but in 2001, he received information theory best paper award for it, and in my opinion, that's the highest, as far as I know, that's the highest cited theory paper, meaning, you know, like a f truly foundationally theoretical paper, uh, which uh, in the information theory society history. So among students and colleagues, Emory is famous for his wisdom and outstanding teaching, for which he received multiple teaching awards, and uh, um, let's, 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 let's welcome Emory.